Welcome back to another episode, folks. Today I want to just talk quickly about why trampling down grass when we're grazing with mixed livestock is not a waste of resources. It's actually investing into the future, into the carbon bank of the farm, and it's what formulates the bottom line next year and beyond. Quick aerial flyover as we're approaching the middle of August. The gardens are abundant, kicking out wonderful crops. A bit weedier than it's ever been this year. There's a lot of perennial weeds that have popped up on top of the beds this year. And we'll be doing a quick uh, go through to keep on top of that. No serious weed pressure and you can see it looks pretty clean anyway. Grass is in recovery. We've got the cows and sheep they've been up in the forest paddocks now which they thoroughly enjoyed but the forage is quite thin up there so we've left K1 the first of the neighbors fields which we're now back onto with the cows and sheep and we're leaving K2 and 3 the bigger paddocks which are bigger than our farm to stockpile for winter grazing that's the plan so far at least if we can keep grazing the animals on our land through to end of October we'll be able to graze through till Christmas on the neighbors land and that will be ideal. Tomatoes in the greenhouse here, finally catching up. It's always a bit slow up here at this latitude. A pretty beautiful day. We've had a bunch of rain after the long droughty season, and now we're getting the odd summery-like day, but it's not so warm, but that's the way it is farming up here at 59 degrees. I'm up here in Topfield, and we were last grazing through here about six weeks ago now. And you remember, if you've been following our channel, the grass was over the back of the cows. Grass is over the cows' backs. Hello, Winston. Right now it's had about 30 days recovery and it's up at knee height. And what we did when we came through before is really trampled a lot of material on the ground. Now, a lot of people would see that as waste, but there is no waste in nature. And by laying this thick organic mulch down on the ground, we are making sure we capture every drop of rain that does land after that dry spell. And I don't know if you'll make it out in the video here, but the soil surface remains moist, even in the driest of weathers. And there's beautiful worm castings covering the entire surface of the soil. Everywhere you look, just pure worm castings, lots of insect life eggs of insects and this is beautiful to see so we'll be grazing back through here in a week or two's time i think coming through with the cows and sheep but there is no waste in nature by laying that material down we're just investing in the next swathe of grass and the future of the carbon bank of our farm and it's glorious to see Beautiful growth. If you go up to the neighbor's farm now, that grass that's had no animals on it, it's rank and it just cannot perform anything in the rest of the year. We've got beautiful luscious growth. Let's take one of these grass plants out. See what it looks like down from the base. So we've got one, two, three, four, five true leaves. What? Hello Ragnar, you came walking up in the field. Look, hold that one up so we can see. We've got five or six true leaves and they're yellowing off at the bottom. So this grass is safe to graze. And the cows will absolutely love this stuff. It's beautiful. Just look at the thickness of the leaves. Yeah, look. It's amazing. This is grass that's performing nothing like it did when we moved here. And so we're just going to keep repeating this process, trampling a lot of the material, letting the animals selectively graze what they want to graze in tight cells moving daily and putting the rest of it back on the ground as manure and urine, leaving some grass standing. You can see some old tufts. If we just jump up here right now, I want to just show this. If you get down, especially in the evening, you see some of the older grasses left standing and this is coxfoot, but you see the new coxfoot's coming up from the stem here. But maybe I can catch it on film here. It's best to do this early in the morning or late in the evening where you can really see, but see all the insect life. Spiders webs here, 
going all the way across the field. This is habitat creation. Different age groups, different age classes of grasses. Tall, woody material, new vegetative growth, baby plants coming up underneath at all stages of development. This is beautiful stuff. And this is what we want. We want 3D edge, because that <laughs> creates the habitat for a diversity of creatures that create balance in our habitat. Anyone can do this, folks. There's no magic here. I think it's mostly the power of chicken with the nutrient they're putting down on the ground in their manures, but always managing our grazing so that we're not overgrazing and specifically allowing grass to express its physiology. Because when you allow grass to express its physiology, it's going to be rooting as deep as possible, as long as possible in the year, pumping short chain carbohydrates into the ground, feeding soil microbiology. And that's what we're doing. We're microbe farmers. So we're ensuring that no grass plant on the farm is overgrazed, that microbial life is respected, treated with care, and the output is healthy cows, healthy sheep, and a healthy ecosystem that's attracting wild species all the way up to the predator species that we take as the reflection of the work that we've done. But it's such a beautiful thing to be in August now with such beautiful growth and such nutritious big leaf grass. It's a wonderful place to be in and we feel more and more resilience every year that we do this. We really noticed it back in 2018 in the great drought. We also had grass up to our shoulders and that was a time when the neighbors had already gone yellow and people were selling off half their beef herds because they knew there'd be a winter shortage of feed. It's become amply evident that this stuff works, folks. It's easy. Anyone can do it. It's about observation, timing, and a bit of planning and replanning whenever necessary. Having the animals in the right place at the right time for the right reason, as it were. But it's pretty simple to do. We train people up in a few days how to do this. And many of our past students are doing a wonderful job too. It doesn't take many years to turn around damaged grassland. Soil, bottom of the scale of permanence. Quickest thing to damage, but the quickest thing to build. Look at all that stuff here. There's still a few property in the village that could turn into a restaurant or a dance hall you never know but we're just scoping out a bargain this is silly gordon which is a really nice little cafe down on the lake here and it's next door to this so we're going to go and just see it's the old camping place that gave us a lot of bikes the first year we were here why did i give you so many bikes i think so didn't need them This is a quite a big old building that's been for 16 camper wagons. Not very much land, but could have potential. It's a bit run down, but we're just curious to have a good look around. So this place was actually turned into a sobriety society because there were two guys looking after the railway, which is just up the hill. One of them got squished by a train because he was drunk. So the other made a sobriety society. It's been used for camping. There's quite a few double bedrooms in the property and camping outside. We would be more interested in farm to fork pop-up restaurant and event space for courses in the winter. It's got a commercial kitchen and a camper's kitchen. It was going for 120,000 euros. It went down to 100,000 euros and they want to sell it. It's got a shower block out here as well as two shower blocks inside and a laundry room, commercial kitchen here. But basically, I don't think many people would buy a place like this because it's so uniquely, uh, you know, it needs a lot of 
maintenance to keep this up. It needs a lot of renovation, but I reckon you could probably get an offer in for 70,000 euros or something, which in that case would make this, you know, I could return the money from running a couple of trainings and give us a winterized space for doing things. Don't know. Needs totally reskinning on the outside. Comes with half a hectare. It's got a field here and another one at the top for camping. But the lake is just behind here. You can't see through. There's a beautiful river down here. And it's the couple that used to run the village shop that closed down some years ago. Um, ah, I can see a lot of potential here, but it would be a lot of work and a lot to manage on top of what we already do. We have a big boiler room downstairs. Campers can come in at the bottom. We have more showers and toilets. This is a big boiler room you can't really see. But wood powered boiler. Making birdhouses. Super cool, Ragnar. Banging nails, sawing bits of wood. Time to paint. Ragnar, what have you made? A birdhouse. <laughs> nice job. So, in sieving compost recently, Grace discovered some grass snake eggs. She re relocated them in this box. There are plenty grass snakes. Couple hatching. But we'll leave it there today, folks. Hope you enjoyed just seeing our beautiful grass. I'm very happy about it. So is Ragnar. And we'll catch you in a video soon. Bye for now. Hi, 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 hi.